So let's do this. We ventured into chapter 12 and we discussed uh, vector value functions, uh, plane curves or space curves. But I wanted to show you what you could do on your calculator. So I have a calculator on this computer. I have a TI 84 uh, on this computer and I wanted to show you this because you may, you may not know this. Um, And here's what I wanted to show you very kind of quickly is I wanted to show you that you can go to mode and maybe all your life you've been in uh, function mode uh, where you can type in y equals but if I uh, cursor down here to function mode I can move over to parametric mode you see that yeah. I can go to parametric mode and if I hit enter now I'm in parametric mode, and look what I can do. I can type in parametric equations um, <clears throat> for x. I mean, it, so when I hit y equals now, instead of I, instead of a, a bunch of y equals, I get a bunch of these uh, sets of parametric equations. I can type in x and y. Now I've got one today I want to look at. It's uh, it's on the board now. It's three sine two t cos two t. So, so anyway, this calculator only works in two dimensions. Uh, we also discussed three-dimensional vector value functions, space curves, and my calculator won't help me with that. But I want to type this in, uh, 3 sine 2t for x, cos 2t for y. Uh, you type it in there, uh, and I can see this graph. Does anybody want to guess or speculate on what this graph might be? Circle? It's not circle. Or it's uh, well, it's only 2D. You said circle. The sine and cosine make you think of circle, but when I've got different coefficients, when I've got that 3 sine 2T, is that working? No. <clears throat> I'm terrible at that. Sorry. I can't type. I have to do this. Hey, when you hit your variable button now, it's a T instead of an X. See that? I'm going to type in Y. This is klutzy. Using the calculator on my computer is a little klutzy for me. Bear with me. Uh, see? <laughs> uh, Radiance? Yeah, you want to be in radians, definitely. Man. Not typing too well. But my main point is uh, there it is, though. You see a little graph down there. See it? So I'm in parametric mode on my calculator. I went to mode and I went over to parametric mode. And maybe you've never done that before? It's awesome. Right, it's very, it's very cool. Uh, and, and I can adjust my window and look at, but, but this, there's my equation up there. It's a parametric equation, x and y functions of t. We've got it written as a vector value function. Uh, but there's the graph. And what is it? Can you tell? Ellipse. Thank you, it's an ellipse. You know, we learned about circles the other day, and, and when we had circles, we had the same radius. I think I did some with a, with a, with a radius of four. I had a four cosine t, a four sine t. Radius is four, circle. I, I like to think of an ellipse as a circle with two radiuses. It's kind of a lie. Uh, in fact, it's false. <clears throat> but it's kind of a cool, cool way to think. Uh, a circle with two radiuses in the in, in the x direction it's got a radius of three and in the y direction it's got a radius of one which is an ellipse actually so there's a little picture of it um, <clears throat> so my point is I didn't do uh, I didn't do this Monday but in uh, with vector value functions in 2d your calculators can help you using parametric mode, parametric equations. You don't have to plot a million points. You can type it in your calculator and see the, see the graph. 
Um, <clears throat> so I'm ready to, I'd actually want to turn off this calculator now. I just wanted to show you that in parametric mode, I'm going to turn this off. I don't want this. <clears throat> Now here's my question. Listen, so I'm opening today with this question. This is a, 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 like we said, this is a plane curve. We already know kind of what it is. And, and here's what I want. I want you to, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I want you to find and sketch the velocity and acceleration vectors at the point where t equals 5 pi over 6. So besides finding and sketching the velocity and acceleration vectors, uh, I also want you to sketch the curve. And we already had the curve up there using our calculator, but I want it up here with, uh, I'm going to draw a nice big picture of this curve. Uh, we decided that this curve was an ellipse. <clears throat> you know, one way to think is, you know, what, what kind of, you know, one thing the book does, the book asks you about the domain of these things right off the bat in 12.1. They ask about the domain of these vector value functions. The domain is the T values you get to plug in. Well, what are the T values you get to plug in to a function like this? All real numbers. Thank you. Anything you want. Right. You can plug anything you want for sine and cosine. You know what's fun about sine and cosine, though, is to think about what they spit out. What's their output? And you probably know that cosine and sine spit out numbers between or negative one and one. Yeah. And hang on. Watch this. So the X component is going to be values between, well, negative one and one multiplied by three. Exactly. So my X values live between negative three and three, which goes with my concept of my ellipse. Uh, and my Y values live between negative one and one, which goes with my concept of my ellipse here. And uh, this is an ellipse. You know, I, I could plot some points, which I don't really want to do. Um, <clears throat> the other day, yeah, Monday, we talked about a, a circular motion, which was similar to this. This is elliptical motion. Um, we had cosine for the x and sine for the y. We said it started on the x-axis and did counterclockwise motion. I got these things switched now. I've got sine and cosine. I've got sine for the x cosine for the y, I'll just tell you that it starts here. When t equals zero, it starts here, and this time it goes clockwise. Mm -hmm. Oops. I'm trying to draw an accurate ellipse. We, we sort of draw little arrows to show orientation. We had that discussion Monday. Uh, and we also had this discussion Monday. How long does it take to get back to where it started? <clears throat> One radian? Pi. The answer is pi. the period and whatever that is. And the period is? Two pi over two. Uh, two. <clears throat> uh, yes, two pi divided by that coefficient two. So this is a, 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 a smaller period, a, a sped up uh, traveling on this curve, the period is pi. So it makes it back to this point at t equals pi. <clears throat> you know, just for fun, well, when are you here then? Pi over, over two. two. Pi over two. What about here? Pi over four. Pi over four. What about here? Pi over two. Three pi over four, I think. Yeah. That's half a pi. That's three fourths of a pi. That's a full pi. It takes me back to the beginning. Okay. All right, now, what do I want? I want to find and sketch the velocity and acceleration vectors. Uh, again, this sort of takes you up into 12.3. <laughs> the other day we did 12.1, 12.2, and 12.3, kind of all in one, because it, it goes like that. It flows like that. So we did it like that. Um, 
Your book doesn't mention velocity and acceleration up until 12.3, but, but we learned how to do that. Uh, if this is a position vector, the velocity vector would be the derivative. And the acceleration vector would be the second derivative, the next. Right. So let's knock out a couple derivatives. I'm going to call it r prime, but I could also call it v of t for velocity, or r prime. And what is the derivative of 3 sine 2t? Um, Good. The derivative of sine is cosine. The chain rule spits out a 2. So you said 6 cosine 2t. You're right. And the derivative of cos 2t? Negative sine 2t. The chain rule spits out a 2. Negative 2 sine 2t. Good job. This is the velocity vector in general at any time. This is the velocity vector in general at any time. Um, I want this at the point when t equals 5 pi over 6. I'll plug that in in a second. Let's go ahead and get the second derivative. The acceleration vector is the second derivative of position. Uh, negative 12 sine 2t, comma, negative 4 si uh, cosine 2t, negative 4 cosine 2t. Okay, this is good stuff. Good stuff. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I want to evaluate these at 5 pi over 6. Uh, I'd like to do that exactly without decimalizing. I don't know. I may decimalize at some point. Uh, but I can do it without decimalizing, I, I think. Um, you know what else I'd like to know, though? Where is that point? I mean, 5 pi over 6, I sort of got this plotted out pretty well and labeled pretty well. It's still a little tough to find 5 pi over 6. Actually, it's 5 pi over 6. I mean, here's pi, right? You start at 0 and you go all the way around to pi. So 5 pi over 6 must be over here somewhere. But you're going this way, you guys. Sorry. Eh. I should have picked, maybe I should have picked a different time. Uh, I mean, the time is 5, 5, or 6, and we're, but we're measuring now from where this started, which is here. And you measure 5, 5, or 6 around, it puts you over here somewhere. I, you know, let's just find the point. How would you find the point? How would you find the point where you're at? Plug it into the position function. If you want to know your position, plug this into your position function. Thank you. Uh, I'll do that. R of 5 pi over 6. <clears throat> okay, you guys, I'm plugging it in there. It's uh, 5 pi over 6 times 2. Yeah, I kind of don't want to write all that out. Um, so I'll get out the end there. <laughs> uh, 3 sine 2, 5 pi, I am writing it out, yes. Um, and then cosine of 2 times 5 pi over 6. All right, here we go. Here we go. You know, the 2 cancels with the 6. It's 5 pi over 3. 5 pi over 3, the sine of 5 pi over 3. Anybody got a unit circle in their head? Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> 5 pi over 3 is over here. In, on the unit circle, and the sine of that is, uh, that's a 60 degree related angle. The sine is square root of 3 over 2 times 3. Oh, it's negative. Wait a minute. It's negative down here. So I think that's negative 3 square roots of 3 over 2. Was that too fast? The time was 5 pi over 6. When you plug it in and multiply by 2, you get 5 pi over 3. On a unit circle, 5 pi over 3 is down here, and the sine value is negative square root of 3 over 2. The cosine value is a half. It's the same angle, and the cosine value is a half. So there is the point where I'm at. Uh, hey, I would like that decimalized. What is that? 3 squared is 3 over 2. What is that? Negative, uh, somebody help me. 2.598. All right, thank you. All right. And, uh, and one half. Uh, I can find that point. 
That is the point. That's negative 2.5 and 1 half. I'll be darned. Look at it. There it is, you guys. There's the point where t is 5 pi over 6. Negative 2.598 and up a half. And you're on the curve. <clears throat> if you recall from, uh, <clears throat> from the other day, this is the position vector. <laughs> this is the position vector you draw from the origin out to this position. And, and, and that's the point on the curve where we're at at this moment. All right, at that place, I want to draw, then I want to draw my velocity and acceleration vectors, which are right here in general, but I want to evaluate them at 5 pi over 6. Five, five over six. Uh, <clears throat> again, I'm going to run into these. You plug it in, you multiply by 2, and I'm going to run into these 5 pi over 3s again. Uh, so here I go. Watch this. Uh, at t equals 5 pi over 6, you know, just, this is going to be a velocity vector here. <clears throat> and what is it? Uh, what did we say? You plug in 5 pi over 6, multiply by 2, you get 5 pi over 3. Cosine of 5 pi over 3? 6 to 1 half. 1 half? Three. 1 half times 6? A 3. All right, let's do that again. 5 pi over 6 times 2 is 5 pi over 3. The sine of 5 pi over 3 is square root of 3, three, over, two. Of three over 2, but it's negative. Multiplied by that, negative 2. Uh, square root I think I'm getting root positive root square root of 3. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bam, that's my velocity vector at this moment. And if you want to sketch it, you go to the curve and you sketch it at that point. You don't draw it from the origin. <clears throat> I like to put velocity in blue. And here I go. I go over 3 from this point. I go over 3, and I go up the square root of 3, which is about 1.7. Here it is, you guys. From this point, I just found the... There it is. That is so beautiful. I missed it a little there. But it sure looks tangent to the curve like it's supposed to be. Hey, remember we said the orientation of this curve was, uh, was clockwise? Is that mm -hmm. what's going on? Hey, it's a good thing that my velocity vector is pointing that way, then. I mean, you should never have your curve orientation going one way and have your velocity pointing the other way. That doesn't make any sense. Something's wrong. So if we think of this as a little particle traveling on this curve, you know, if, if, if it's a little particle traveling on this curve and then somebody let go of the string, it would go flying off in that direction at that speed at this moment. That's its velocity at this moment. You follow me? Mm -hmm. A little particle that's somehow tethered to this curve, if you let go of the tether at this moment, it would fly off with that speed in that direction. That's its velocity. Cool, let's calculate the acceleration. The acceleration at 5 pi over 6. I plug it into to this acceleration vector in general, uh, the second derivative, and I can do that again. It, I plug in the 5 pi over 6, I get the 5 pi over 3. The sine of 5 pi over 3 is a negative square root of 3 over 2 times this negative 12. So 6, square root 6 square roots of 3, comma. You plug in the 5 pi over 6 yeah, times 2, you get the 5 pi over 3, that's that half. That's a positive a half times negative 4. I guess it's negative 2. Ta-da! There's the acceleration vector at this moment. And I can draw it. And I have to move over 6 square roots of 3, which is roughly what, you guys? 10.4. Thank you. 10.4. i got to go over from this point. I gotta go over 10.4. <laughs> there it is, roughly there, and down two. And draw your acceleration vector in red. No, you can draw it however you want. I like red for acceleration. You ready for this? Wow, that is beautiful. Can't believe how accurate I can be just by hand, you know? That's beautiful. You can, 
This is a beautiful test question, by the way. Quiz question, test question. I mean, this is what I like to do. I like to throw all these thoughts into one good problem. You know, like I said, these are thoughts from 12-1, 12-2, and 12-3, all in one good problem. And, and, and in a way, you're done. Uh, I could ask some more interesting questions. <clears throat> I'm really kind of interested. At this moment, then, I'm going to ask this question. Uh, is it, is the little particle, if we thought of it as a particle, uh, is it <clears throat> speeding up or slowing down or neither at this moment? Speeding up. Speeding up, slowing down, or neither? Speeding up. Speeding up? Up. How do you know? Same. You have same no back to it the <clears throat> Same direction. Well, I mean the same exact direction, but I think I know what you mean, right? You can break the direction. Right? 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 So then you have to break it up into components. components. Yeah. Why is perpendicular? Why is that correct? You're right. I think it's speeding up, mm -hmm. and I think the reason is just visually, you can sort of tell that the acceleration vector. That's a hell of an acceleration vector. That that acceleration vector is sort of with the velocity vector. Sort of with is a is not a mathematical concept. That's a that's kind of a Smith concept. The acceleration is sort of with the velocity. You know what that really means is that it's with. I think the angle between the two vectors is less than 90. Yeah. I think that's what we really maybe are trying to say. Because I think if it was 90, if the angle was 90, what would you say? Speeding up, slowing down, or neither? neither. Yeah, right. When acceleration is totally perpendicular to velocity, it is not contributing to its speeding up or slowing down at all. You're right. It would, it would, it would contributes nothing, and, and, and it would be neither. And if that, if that acceleration was sort of behind the 90 degree angle, Oh, yeah. or making an obtuse angle, it would be dragging on it, slowing down the velocity in the next frame. So I think you're right. If, it's, if you can see that it makes an angle less than 90, it's kind of with it, and, uh, and we can say it's speeding up yeah, at this moment. That's a good problem. A lot of little details. Uh, you know, you have to remember the chain rule. That's a good problem, though. I like that. Um, <clears throat> I think I want to do another one. Can I do another one? Can I get rid of this one? I'm going to get rid of this one. Uh, watch this. Uh, here's one without. Uh, so I listen. We like the we like the elliptical motion and the circular motion. I didn't do. I did, kind of did a circle the other day. I don't know if I did all these. I don't think I did all these vectors. You should mess with a circle. There's probably some good homework problems. Uh, I want to do one that's, that's just kind of crazy. Watch this. Uh, a vector value function like this. Um, 3t squared minus 2t comma uh, four minus t cubed. That's a vector value function, and I do not know what it looks like. Um, if you have a calculator and you can go to parametric mode and type that in and play with your window and, and, and play with your T settings, which is part of your window, uh, maybe we can get a good looking graph of this. But my question again is going to be this. Um, <clears throat> find and sketch. And by the way, you're supposed to sketch the curve, but then you also find and sketch the velocity and acceleration vectors. Watch this. At, I'm going to say this differently this time. At the point Five, five, which I hope is an actual 
point on here. <clears throat> I hope that's actually a point on here. See, I guess I could pick up my graphing calculator since you guys seem to be lagging just a tad. It can be crazy, man. It can be doing all kinds of stuff. Set your T. Hey, go to your window and make sure you got some negative T's and positive T's. I think by default, sometimes you only have positive T's, and that's not good. To see the whole graph, maybe you set it from a negative 5 to 5 on the T min, T max. You go to mode, you go to parametric mode, go to y equals, I'll type this in, three, Uh, okay, so I got my T set from negative 7 to 7, and I got a window from negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10, and I'm sort of seeing this picture. It looked like it came in like this. I'm not sure what it did right here, uh, but then it kind of uh, uh, took off this way. And so I'm going to put this orientation on it because you know, because I paid attention, I watched the graph, <laughs> and I paid close attention and saw what it did. It went that way. Uh, so I have the orientation. The calculator helped me. Yes. Hey, of course, these are easier derivatives to do. Uh, they're very easy derivatives to do. Um, Oh, by the way, I did say I'm at the point five five. Now that I'm looking at this graph, is that even possible? Oh, it does look like it. It does. It kind of looks. Okay, here, here. Make this a little better. Kind of looks like uh, maybe somewhere in here is five five. Mm -hmm. Well, hang on a second. Let's, uh, okay, so let's do our derivatives, right? We need velocity, we need acceleration, we need a couple derivatives. They're easy, they're real easy derivatives, of course. The velocity vector in general would be? 16 minus two. 16 minus two, comma, negative three, negative three t squared. Awesome. And the acceleration vector in general would be? Six, six and negative six t. Negative six t. And, you know, to find these at this point, I really do need a t-value, of course. I need a t-value to plug in. And so last problem, I gave you the t-value. This problem, I didn't. I gave you the point. So it's up to you to, to do a little work to figure out um, what t-value puts you at this point. Which probably means go back to the position function, and what you want is this x position, 3t <clears throat> squared minus 2t, you want it to equal 5. Mm -hmm. And perhaps you need to solve for t. Uh, great. But you also want the y position, 4 minus t cubed, to equal 5, right? Because mm -hmm. that's the y value. The y, they just happen to be the same x and y value. You know what? I'd rather solve this equation. It is not difficult. Uh, move the 4 over, negative t cubed is 1. Move the negative sign over, t cubed is negative 1. So what's the cube root of negative 1? Uh, negative 1, right? Yeah, t equals negative 1, I think, is the answer that gives you 5. Yes, it is. Hey, does it work? In, does that work in the x? If t is negative 1? Yeah, it gives you five. All right, I'm happy. T is negative one. I needed that. 
It was not given, and I needed it. Are you following me? I had a little extra work I had to go do. I had to figure out that I needed that time. <clears throat> okay. Well, let's uh, if I evaluate these uh, derivatives at this time, uh, I'll have specific velocity and acceleration vectors I can try to draw. At t equals negative 1, uh, I can plug in a negative 1 and work this out pretty easily. Uh, negative 8, negative 3. Are you guys getting that? And then 6, 6. I guess. At t equals negative 1. I'm going to try to sketch those. That's my velocity and acceleration vector at this moment in time. At this moment in time, negative 8, negative 3 from this point, which is supposed to be 5, 5. Uh, can I go over negative 8 and negative 3? I guess. That doesn't make any sense. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. What did I just do? I went over positive 8. Don't do that. Right. Negative 8 is this way. Negative 8. Negative 8. Negative 3. Can I draw a vector from there to there? It's beautiful. What It's supposed to be tangent to the curve, like it looks. Your velocity vector is supposed to be tangent to the curve. That's beautiful. And the acceleration at this moment is 6, 6. That's positive 6, over 6, and uh, up 6. Uh, there it is acceleration at this moment. You can definitely tell then that this particle is probably slowing down. slowing down. You know, it's probably cruising in here. It's it's headed into this major turn, you know, so it's probably got to slow down. It's heading in here. It's trying to turn and it probably accelerates as it leaves and speeds up, maybe. Yeah. You guys have any questions? These are good test questions. <clears throat> um, quiz questions, test questions. Yes. So I. So you're. So there's a subtle thing going on here, right? <clears throat> there's what we call position vectors, and the position vectors that like you didn't even see me draw, <laughs> but at different times I've got position vectors going from the origin, taking me out to these positions, and they take me to these positions, and if I connect those positions, I get this curve. Uh, so position vectors are drawn from the origin out to these positions. But the velocity acceleration vectors I want to draw on the curve. So I don't draw them beginning at the origin. I draw them on the curve at the point where I'm at, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> there was, you know, there was a lot of position vectors that took me out and generated that curve. Uh, the, you know, one of them was this one, though. When t was negative 1... You plug in negative 1 and you get the position vector <clears throat> 5, 5, which takes you out to the point 5, 5, right? And uh, anyway, that was that was this guy. That's not a very good looking 5, 5, but it's cute. That's it. I, uh, I'm going to do another homework problem now. I'm not going to do this. This is, this is good stuff, and these are sort of my own kind of questions. I mean, if you look through the book, they don't really put it all together exactly like this. They make you do some little steps, maybe. Maybe they'll say do a velocity vector. Maybe later they'll do an acceleration. I mean, I like to throw it all together. It makes, all, it makes sense. It all ties together. 
Um, back, back in 12.1, there was another thing we addressed at the end of class last time. I want to try another one of these. I'm going to try one out of the book. Uh, I want to try... Sorry, I think I want to try. This is tough. You ready? I'm going to try this 56. <clears throat> so this is in 12.1. This is problem 56. And it is this. Uh, you have two surfaces. Two surfaces, which is... Not really a chapter 12 topic. Surfaces were a chapter 11 topic. And, uh, and here are the two surfaces. Um, <clears throat> 4x squared plus 4y squared plus z squared equals 16. 4x squared plus 4y squared plus z squared equals 16. <clears throat> the other surface is x equals z squared x equals z squared. Wow. I'd like to try to sketch these. <clears throat> but what, what am I trying to do? I have two surfaces, and we had this discussion last class. Two, when two surfaces inter, intersect, they form a curve of intersection, some kind of curve of intersection, which can be represented with our vector-valued functions, because vector-valued functions describe a curve in space. Um, so these are two surfaces, they intersect somehow, and uh, their curve of intersection can be represented with a vector valued function. Uh, now here's the thing, I want to show you how easy this is. To find this curve of intersection is easy. To sketch all this is difficult. Uh, the book wants me to do both. The book gives me a hint, too. They tell me what to, how to parametize it. They say to let z equal t. Uh, I felt I shouldn't even have mentioned that, I guess. Pretend you didn't hear that. <laughs> because on my test, I'm not going to tell you what to let. I'm not going to tell you how to parametize it. So I want to show you how easy this is, though. You have two surfaces. And you, you should let some, I mean, to parametize it and come up with a, a, a vector value function for the curve of intersection, you should let somebody be t. And you could really let anybody you want. But I think z would be an obvious choice. I think you should focus on this equation since it only has two variables. It sure would be smart to let z equal t. If you let z equal t, I mean, I'm filling in, I let z equal t, then what would uh, x be? t squared, and do you think you could find y? Mm -hmm. I think so. If you took those parametrized t's and plugged them in for x's and z's in the above equation, see, and you are mixing the two equations, so you're looking at the curve of intersection. You let z be t, x is t squared, throw that into that top equation. Uh, what did we say x was? t squared? And then it's squared, so it's t to the fourth right there. 4y squared, I'm going to find y in terms of t. And then z is a t, so that's a t squared equals 16. That's what I want to do. I want to solve for y in terms of t. Very easy, algebra. Uh, it's very easy, algebra. I mean, it looks messy, but here it is. Uh, you subtract those terms, of course. 4y squared is 16 minus t squared minus 4t to the fourth. What should I do now? Divide by 4. Divide by 4y squared is 4 minus t squared over 4 minus t to the fourth. I divided a couple, 4 through there. Uh, take the square root, and y is technically plus or minus the square root of... 4 minus t squared over 4 minus t to the 4th. That's it. You, you did you, you accomplished it. Uh, I'll fix that. The 
vector valued function with this parametrization uh, is the curve of intersection. So if someone says, find the curve of intersection, you, you, you get to choose who gets to be T. It's that easy. Let somebody be T. It's kind of smart to focus down here on this two variable situation though, I think. Let, let Z be T, you get X, and then you easily get Y, and you've answered the question. The hard part is sketching all this and trying to see what this is. Uh, a nice computer program would help. You could type that into the computer and see what it looks like. Uh, but we are supposed to have a little knowledge here. Let's work on our knowledge. Um, does anybody know what this is? Good job. A 3D ellipse, which we call an ellipsoid. An ellipsoid. And, and if to, to, to study him a little bit further, I kind of like him in standard form, which means... Uh, Divide by 16. Yeah, make it, well, make it a, yeah, make it equal to 1, divide by 16. Uh, I'll do that quick, and I'll see x squared over 4, y squared over 4, and z squared over 16 equals 1. Right, you guys? Uh, okay. I can attempt to draw that. I recall a little bit of stuff. I recall that uh, what I can do is move over in the x direction or uh, out and the x axis is coming out at me. The y axis is here. There's the z axis. I can move in the x direction uh, back to and out to. I can move in the y direction over to and over to. And in the, oh, and by the way, if I connect those points, I kind of have the equator of the ellipsoid, sort of the equator of the ellipsoid, uh, or the cross section in the xy plane, or the trace in the xy plane. Uh, what about in the z direction? What do I do? Go up four. I go up four, and down negative four, and now if I connect these, I've got a good picture of this ellipse. Not bad, huh? I also try to connect these. Wow, that's not bad. All right, what's this? What's this? Okay, I like that word, parabola. Thank you, it's parabola. But there's some details we need to figure out. Uh, let's see, hang on. When, it, when, when it's good old y equals x squared, I, I know what to do, right? I got a y-axis and an x-axis. Right, you guys? So wait a minute, who's acting like x now? Oh, no, z. So, so this is my z-axis, and who's acting like y? X. Okay, so that's what it is. It's this parabola. kind of surrounding the x-axis, and, and then, okay, here it is, you guys. So it's surround, it's coming out at me, which is hard to draw. <clears throat> it's hard to draw, here it comes, it's, it's blue. It's coming out at me. There it is. Now wait a minute, that's not the entire surface, this is a surface, and we know when there's a missing y variable, we know what this surface does. It, runs parallel to the y-axis. So it's a parabolic cylinder or cylindrical surface. Oh boy. You know, talk about a mess. <clears throat> But what I really want, what I'm really trying to draw, I mean, what I just drew was the two surfaces. What I'm trying to draw and imagine or ima is this thing, the curve of intersection. I'm trying to get this curve of intersection. Um, so now you have to imagine this parabola slicing through this ellipsoid. 
and I only want the points where they touch each other, that's, it's where they intersect each other. I want to trace that curve. You know, I know one of the points, one of the points is right here. When this paraboloid comes through here, parabola comes through here, it's going to hit right here. I think it'll touch. Do you think it'll touch there? Yeah. And on its way out, I think it'll touch over there on its way out as it passes through. In between there, good luck. This is going to... It's just these points on the edge of this ellipsoid where the... Isn't that go through? I'm sorry. I didn't see this. I see it. <laughs> Do we really need a picture? Well, yeah. right, but keep in mind, if someone says, get the curve of intersection, we got it. That was easy. That was five minutes. Was 15 minutes. Um, uh, this is a terrible picture. The fact that it's coming out at me is making it a struggle for me to draw. Let me, can I, I got a better way to draw it. If, if it was sitting up straight, here it is, you guys. Uh, oops. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like this, kind of like a taco shell, but it's not the shell. It's just that, that rim, that, because it is just a curve. It's not a surface. It's a curve. And I think it's just that kind of the rim. Oh, or a Pringle. Remember our Pringle? Maybe it's sort of a, but it's not the Pringle, it's the outer rim of the Pringle. But it's, oh, but it's also facing you. I got this one sitting up. It's like a, I think it's kind of like a taco, but you, there is no back to it. There is no size to it. There's just the rim. There's no filling inside. Zero calories. <laughs> Does that help? Does that help? It's mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, okay. So I think I'm going to quit today. We uh, have an early class, and uh, we'll quit today. I. Uh, Friday, I'll, I'm going to do more of this, uh, but I think I'll move on into some more, into some word problems. I think I'll move into 12.3 a little more. There's some good uh, projectile motion problems we haven't looked at yet. So, thank you. Do you, uh,